imagine someone who is uh, taking a survey. So on the roadside, they're in the busy, you know, a lot of people going, coming. So they just stop some people randomly. And they just ask one or two questions. Imagine the question asked is this. Why are you living? <laughs> Very profound question to ask. Person just walking. <clears throat> Yet, what's the purpose for your living? Sometimes in social media we see all kinds of surveys happening in people. So, Most of the people, I believe, would answer something like this. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just living. <laughs> Many people don't even know why they are living. They are living from day to day. They may be studying. They may be working. They may be involved in various things in life. But what is it that you are wanting to? What's your purpose? Some people would uh, cleverly say, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just existing or I, I live because uh, I have life so that I am living. That's all. Somebody else uh, <clears throat> would say that actually I don't want to live, but I'm living. And that will be the group of people who are going through a lot of difficulties and problems and uh, uh, they, they know that suicide is not good, so they don't commit suicide. But otherwise, they just don't want to live. Every day is a problem for them. How will I complete this day? So I've already told two categories of people. Some people who are slaving and some people who, who don't want to live. Then there will be a third category of people who are living with some kind of a need. Some want to earn money. Some want to enjoy life. These are related because if you earn money, people think that they can enjoy life. So, uh, most Malayali people would not say these things. I feel the most Malayali people are, will say that, especially the adults, they would say, I'm living for my family. Yeah. That's why I'm doing all this. For my family, I'm living. Then there will be some more ambitious people I mean, in this, and they would say that, well, uh, I want to... be recognized. And I am working hard for it. I want to be recognized. I want to be popular, especially among the young, younger people now. People want to produce some viral videos. <laughs> there will be few rare people who would uh, say that I am living for a social cause. I want to do something for the society. I want. So, so they are living for that. And they will give their life for that. They want to do something substantial. Because they believe that a particular cause is important. This morning, I want to ask you. What fuels you? Where are you living? <laughs> there are, I didn't mention one category of people. You know, I met an old auntie of mine. I think she was 77. So I asked her, so auntie, how are you? In Malayalam, she answered, Mone, grace period. <laughs> I 
it's living. <clears throat> this morning I want to ask you a question which you don't need to answer loudly. Just you need to answer to yourselves. Why are you living? Why? What is the purpose of your living? What is the overarching purpose of all that you do? Recently, I asked uh, uh, two people who had come to our home. Uh, they are believers. So I asked them, apart from, they are ladies, so I said, apart from cooking and uh, other things which you do, it's very important. I don't want to say that that's not it, but that's very important. What else would you like to do? Or are you wanting to do? Went on. What else would you like to do? They don't know. I would like you to uh, turn to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. Apostle Paul. Praise be to God for that servant of God. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 onwards. For the love of Christ controls us. Apostle Paul says, the love of Christ, the fact that Christ loved us so much that he gave his life for us. And now that same love of Christ has been shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. That love controls us in some other versions it is written it constrains us it urges us having concluded this that one died for all Jesus died for all therefore all died when Jesus died for all our former selves which was purposeless or which had its own purposes of living They all died. You see, if, you know, I told you many possible reasons for living in the people around, including the believers. I mean, if it was a Bible study, some of you could have contributed few more possible reasons. It's not an exhaustive list of reasons that I give. But I would say that we can categorize the purpose of living into I don't have any reason to live. And then there's a whole group of people who are living for themselves. They want to earn money for themselves. They want to enjoy. They want to live for their family or for short-term purpose. They want to be recognized, popular, do something meaningful for themselves. I mean, for others so that they would be remembered. But Apostle Paul says in the next line, <clears throat> and Jesus died for all so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Now these words cannot be understood by people who are not born again, who have not realized that their sins have been forgiven. You see, those who have got one healing here, one breakthrough there, one blessing there, would not stop living for themselves and live for Jesus. What's the big thing here, you know? Why should I live for Jesus? <laughs> Why should I live for him? But this question 
you know, they, this whole thought is not a big problem for people whose lives have been blessed through Jesus, whose lives have been delivered through Jesus, redeemed by Jesus. Amen? Yes? You know, when Jesus Christ has become my Savior, He has become my Redeemer, He has become my Lord, He has become my righteousness, then this is the logical thing. So that those who live might no longer, you know that, that word no longer, because till that time they were living for themselves. I was also living for myself. To, you know, I wanted to get good marks, I wanted to achieve something in life. Uh, most of us, we have our own paths, we want to live for ourselves. But those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. We are God's workmanship. Can you complete that? Created in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2.10. We are God's kaipani. You know, we are God's uh, masterpiece. Individually and as a church. Created in Christ Jesus. Uh, those of you who are willing to and I agree to some instruction that I say. Can you say, for good works. For good works. For good works. Somehow, uh, uh, you know, this good works, uh, some people have, you know, after having heard of grace, some people have allergy to good works. Not good works. I am not saved by good works, but I am saved for good Good works should never be, I mean, good works, the problem is good works should never be seen as a means to salvation. But those who are saved, good works should be there in their system, in their blood. Whatever, you know. In another place, uh, I think it's in the book of Titus, it says, the people who are zealous for good works. Not because... Uh, uh, you know, you are going to get salvation. You already got salvation. But you are zealous for good works. We are just seeing what I can do. I'm remembering, you know, King David. He was saying, well, is there anybody from the family of Saul whom I can bless? <laughs> can you imagine the thoughts which is going on in the heart? Mind you, Saul was his enemy. And he's saying, is there anyone whom I can bless? People of God are looking around to bless. How can I bless somebody? Whom can I bless today? Dear brothers and sisters, I am not just telling this to Ma, you know. For years, for years, God has put in my heart, I don't know how I... <laughs> You know, even when I come to the church, of course I want to be blessed. I want to hear the word and I want to be blessed. So that, that thing is there. I want to hear. I want to be blessed. But then there is another simultaneous thing that, ah, whom can I bless? <laughs> Lord, whom should I talk to? Who, who, what can I do? Not only in the church, but otherwise. Is that not true? You are walking with the Lord. Is that not whom can I bless? What can I do? And you know who, who thinks of these things? Whom can I bless? People who are rich. You know, rich not just in this one. People who have something. Hallelujah. You know, people who are belong to God, they have something. They are filled. They are overflowing. You know, 
some of you may have gone through this you know sometimes you have lot of mangoes <laughs> or lot of you know this uh, what do you call bananas you know so you have some two three uh, cola or oh, what's the english of that anyway, two three cola <laughs> and so you are thinking uh, whom should i give okay let me give to my neighbors okay uh, then whom should i uh, yes 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 so uh, let me take the charge i can give to two three people also uh, then who should i give oh some more is left uh, i want to give <laughs> because i have and i want to bless hallelujah people of god hallelujah those who are walking with the lord they have a sense of blessing if nothing else people are filled with love and compassion a hand around another person hallelujah if nothing else you have time oh sorry brother that's the problem that's one thing i don't have you know <laughs> some of you may say this interesting thing i i, <laughs> I saw a, a photograph in the social media where you know somebody says <laughs> some <laughs> some angels are telling in heaven some of these new arrivals i don't know why they they can't talk they are always doing like this <laughs> so <laughs> new arrivals <laughs> so i like that it's so maybe we don't have time but uh, you know at least if you have time we are god's workmanship created in christ jesus for good works hebrews 13:16 hallelujah hebrews 13:16 uh, oh this writer of hebrews had to say this do not neglect oh it's possible to neglect yeah so that's why i am also saying is possible do not neglect doing good and sharing for with such sacrifices god is well pleased god is happy hallelujah with such sacrifices you know many people know that he is happy with sacrifices of praise yes that is true let's offer to him sacrifices of praise we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the lord yes so we bring sacrifice of doing good that's another wonderful sacrifice which we can do dear brothers and sisters this good works is a wonderful thing you see now jesus christ said something very wonderful john chapter 9 verse 4 to 5 the book of john chapter 9 first first verses 4 and 5 yeah jesus christ said we eh, we we must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day look at this look at the word must how many of you are feeling the weight of that word must we must work second we must work the works of him not chumma jumping here and there we must work the works of him hallelujah that's the second point third as long as it is day for night is coming when no one can work now how do i understand this i exactly what jesus christ meant i do not know but i know that when i look at my life also and i look at life generally 
I don't think even if we want to work, we can keep working. Yeah. First of all, there's a time when we will die. <laughs> so then after death, anyway, we can't work. <laughs> Isn't it? So <laughs> we have to be alive to work. Recently, I met a, uh, you know, 51-year-old lady, and I was talking, I was, I was encouraging. I said, you know, there's not much time left. So I said, you know, may, imagine you live till 65. I mean, you are active till 65. See, I'm not, I don't mean to say that after 65, you can, you, you can, you know, really work after 70, 80, 90, no problem. But... I said, how many more years will you live? So that lady was 51. How many, how much time does she have till 65? 14 years, yeah, one four. Simple mathematics, 14 into 365. Five thousand. She only has 5,000 more days. 5,100 days. When converted into days, it looks so less. As long as it is day, night is coming. When you, even if you want to work, you cannot work. Night is coming. <clears throat> and then Jesus Christ says, next verse, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. <laughs> Please try to think what this means. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When I am not in the world, <laughs> we are the light. And when we are not in the world, we cannot be light, you see. So now let's come to the light of the world thing. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Yes, he stepped down. When will we step? Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Jesus Christ saying to the disciples, You are the light of the world. Those of you sitting here who are saying that you are a disciple of Christ Jesus, tell to yourselves, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I am. Not the pastor is the light. No, I am the light. Pastor is also light. Praise God. I am light. A city, now this you can be taken as plural also, but you. You disciples, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. It's an obvious truth. Set on a hill, it cannot be hidden. People from far and wide will see. Okay, next line, please. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Now, Again, this is a very obvious thing. Which foolish person will light a lamp and put it under a basket? Will anyone do like that? No one in their right mind would do like that. Isn't it? So Jesus takes such an obvious thing and says that you are the light, so please don't hide. In my last message, I said, some people are saying I'm an introvert, so I will not love. Okay, I may not speak a lot, but I will certainly interact with other people. Hallelujah. You may not be very great public speaker. No problem. But what about loving? Hallelujah. What about... Uh, please do not withdraw from people. Don't go under the basket. Next line, please. Let your light shine before men in such a way. Oh, so there is a particular way the light has to shine, okay? It has to light, shine in such a way because it can shine in some other way also. <laughs> but let the light shine in 
such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Please note in this sentence, people are going to see whose good works? God's? Not God's good works. Our good works. We have to do good works. It is our good works. Our works of love. They are the good works. Our works motivated by love of God are the good works. And when they see our good works, that light has to shine in such a way that they will glorify their Father in heaven. And that's the great calling which you and I have. Our light must shine. Now, some of you would ask, Sunil uncle or Sunil brother, you know, what is, you know, what do you mean shine? I mean, how do I, how do I shine? In fact, in Malayalam, this word shine is used in a negative way. I mean, shine jiya no kwa, you know? So that's an, that's a, you shouldn't do that, isn't it? Oh, I mean, shine jiya no He's trying to shine. So, people somehow have an aversion to shine. So they say, I will not shine. But then your God says, shine. Let your light shine. So <laughs> what does this word shine mean? You know, I have some insight about it. In the life group, you can share your own insights also. Yeah? The book of John, chapter 1, verse 4, gives me some understanding about this. What is this light? What light you have? <laughs> so, talking about Jesus, Apostle John says, in Jesus was life and the life was the light of men. So we get a very important connection. Let your light shine. We can say, let his life flow. Almost like mathematically, I'm substituting this. Equation one, equation two, and so now this is equation three. Like, because let your light shine. Number one. Number two, light and life connected. So let his life flow. Because that metaphor is also given. In John chapter 7, verse 37, Jesus Christ says, Those of you who are thirsty, let them come to me and keep drinking, and out of them will flow. Streams of living water. And Apostle John is taking this from the same passage which Pastor Vinod was referring to. No, no, no. Uh, uh, same prophet that Pastor Vinod was referring to, Ezekiel, who says that there is a river which flows from the throne of God. And, and that wherever that river flows, the dead things have life. Hallelujah. So let your light shine. Let his life flow. Let his life flow. This is our calling, dear brothers and sisters. God is calling his redeemed people. To live, to let their light shine, to let the river flow. The people around you, your neighbors, your colleagues, your relatives, your friends, your city dwellers, whomever, wherever, wherever you 
are a blessing. Hallelujah. God is calling us to be a blessing. But then, for that to happen, one thing should be there. He must increase and I must decrease. Otherwise, people will get my stench. I am getting a <laughs> line which says, His perfume must increase and my sweat must decrease. <laughs> my wear panatum should decrease. And his perfume manam must increase. Otherwise, the closer I go, people will say, Brother, thank you very much. Oh, I love you. Ah. But if I decrease, hallelujah, God will cause his fragrance, hallelujah. The more I die, watchman, he puts it like this. When that woman broke the alabaster jar, fragrance filled the room. <laughs> he uses that metaphor to say, if that was not broken, there was no fragrance. And God is a God who even does some breaking. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Yeah. So let me move on. And I'm coming towards the end rather, you know. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 says, Isaiah 60. Six zero. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Now, this was written in the Old Testament. How many of you can say that this has been realized in your life? Has the glory of the Lord risen upon you? Yes. Has the Holy Spirit come upon you? Are you, you saved? Isn't, aren't you a temple of the Holy Spirit? Then arise! The problem is, <clears throat> we, we are good in, uh, <laughs> we are, Experts, I would say, we means human beings. So Jesus tells us to shine. But we will make songs saying, Shine, Jesus, shine. Now, I am not against that song. Actually, I have sung that song many times. In fact, fill this land with the Father's glory. And Jesus is saying, Sunil, you shine. You go around. But we piously say, you shine. Why is India dark? Because you are not shining. I mean, pray. Fasting prayer. Republic Day. Prayer. August 15th prayer. You are not shining. But Jesus is asking us, you shine. Shine! Lord, fill column with your light. Fill column, column, column. Amen! Glory! Shine. Arise. Very interesting. And then we will sing. Arise. Arise. Of course, there's some meaning to that. He has to take this place. It's a good song. I like Don Moyen's song. But used wrongly, the proverbs can also be wrong and uh, songs can also be wrong, you see. We have to use it rightly in the right place. We have to arise. Arise! 
we are sitting in one place <laughs> today morning i i read one and you know, i felt led to read one book and in that uh, you know mathai gave me that book his daughter was studying in <coughs> thrissur and the pastor there has written a book so <laughs> that book one chapter is chapter's heading is like this so the context is people expect some special call from god so he says don't just expect a mystical call you need a kick on your pants <laughs> just reading that made me laugh the ending was so funny but uh, very true <laughs> people are all waiting oh lord call me call me give me a call 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 so no, but i don't think god kicks you know but uh, there is a um, somewhat word like this harvest is plenty laborers are few pray that god will thrust <laughs> apparently the word is not just send thrust some of the people who are just sitting there recently i told one brother brother how long you have been in the lord a very nice brother i love him that brother said 30 years i'm not saying leave your job or I mean, that's not what i mean you know rise shine every day let us live for the lord see who am i who am i to tell you any of these things i'm not your boss okay so i am not some great uh, boss telling hey hey you what are you doing why you're not doing no 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 i am a fellow i am under these very same words and of course jesus christ is not telling i did so much for you why you you, you are not doing something back for me kashtam ai poi you know this is too bad you know that's not the tone at all pagaram endu cheyum ningal you know they god is not saying all these things i did so much i gave you 10000 rupees can you not give me back 10 rupees at least you know that's not the tone the tone is we have a great calling we have a wonderful calling we have a calling to be the light to be the blessing we have a calling to you know be rivers of living water but all that will come only if as apostle paul said that those who live should no longer live for themselves one if we don't care for ourselves then who will care for us answer god <laughs> i'm not i don't think god ever asked anybody to be responsible but yet there is a certain kind of life is a carefree life in the sense not careless life those of you writing notes please write not careless life but care free life no cares no tension god will take care of me i was so glad when i heard you know i told one of my very close colleague i have worked with him for from 2008 so it's like how much 16 years i worked with him he is not a believer he is a man of the world <laughs> is my colleague and i told him see i am thinking of moving and i said that because i believe that god is wanting me to he's not a believer but by the way any of these opportunities i use it because i'm not telling a lie i'm just many of us we think that while talking to unbelievers we must not talk anything 
go about God. That's a fact of why. Why am I moving? I should tell a lie to him or what? I, I told the, openly I told, this is why I am. And I really want to be more involved. And You know, when I said like that, you know what he said? I was so glad to hear. He said, you know, Sunil, first of all, he told in a, this thing, oh, you're talking of like vocation, calling. <laughs> so he knows all these terms. And then he said, if you ask me what is my calling, I don't know. Okay? So I said, it's good that you know. <laughs> so that, and then secondly, you know what he said? You know, we all have many desires like this to do something more than what we are doing. But we don't have the freedom to do that because we have to work. He doesn't have a God who can support him, who has given a promise that seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Lastly, Luke chapter 10, verse 1. Luke 10, verse 1. Now, after this, the Lord appointed 70 others, which means there were, I think, 12, 12 people whom he appointed. So, 70 others and sent them in pairs ahead of him to every city and place where he himself was going to come. You know, very interesting. Uh, Jesus Christ appointed 70 people. When? I'm sure they must have been following Jesus for some time. They must have been trained for some time. Jesus Christ appointed number one. I think those of us who are mentoring the leaders and all, it's good sometimes. Point. Many of you, we give some things also. But this appointing was not just to do something in the church or something like that. It was to go. Second, he sent them in pairs. There is something good about pair. Can be a married pair or otherwise Peter and John, Paul and Barnabas, Paul and Silas. Two people. Two are better than one. Jesus appointed. And look at this wonderful thing. He sent them <laughs> ahead of him to every city and place where he himself was going to come. Oh, so which means when you go, remember, he is going to come. Hallelujah. This morning time, let me throw a challenge to you. Yeah? You try to find at least one person. And go! You know, I told this believer, disciple ladies who came to our home. I said, why don't you both do something? <laughs> In a week, two, three times, don't keep on praying. First of all, people sometimes use prayer as a substitute for work. See, those of you who can't move around, I agree. And uh, you can't. Uh, yeah, you are paralyzed. So I can't help it. But the rest of the people, prayer is good. Prayer is essential. But prayer is not a substitute for working. Prayer is not a substitute for evangelism. Prayer is not a substitute for preaching the gospel. Prayer is not a substitute. Prayer is an important adjunct. Prayer is we must pray before, during, after. But those, who, there are some people I, I, I want to just call out, not their names, but call out that practice. So those who are hiding behind, you know, we will pray. Ningala pravarticho, nyangal prarthika, nyangala onda, parail onda. Oh, you have a special anointing to be in the back. Oh, just check whether it is a laziness which is causing you to say that. <clears throat> go visit somebody some unbeliever 
Spend some time. I'm not saying just uh, tell the God. Bless somebody. Do something. Kuch <laughs> karo. You know. Because we have so much to give, isn't it? Just imagine that you have so many etakolas at your home. And that is, uh, you know, you, if you don't give, it will go. Other ch- Please give that. I'm not symbolically speaking to any one of you. <laughs> I don't, I'm not in need of etakola. All I'm trying to say is, and not even to give to me, those who don't have. You, your thing is filled. You have so much. Give. Give to somebody who doesn't have. Give your time. Give your love. Give your care. Give your compassion. Give your mercy. Give the gospel. Give your prayer. Healing deliverance. Let us give. Hannah Grace, can you please come? She will teach us a song. At least we should learn that song. Those of you who can pray that, uh, can, uh, pray that song should pray also. Pray means sing that song. The rest of us, at least we can hear that song. It's a very encouraging song and it's in line with what I have taught today. Yeah? So... <clears throat> Hallelujah. And at the end, I would like, uh, I would request uh, Brother A.B. to please come and give a prayer to the Lord, you know. Lead us in request to the Lord. See, the, we, please pray for me also. I am not above any of these things. God has called us to be a blessing. May the Lord enable us. May And through all this, they will praise our Father in heaven. It's not for any individual glory. Hallelujah. It is for his glory. Hallelujah.